Prime Minister, welcome to Media Corp. Your rally speech covered a wide range of topics, our place in the world, our relations with our neighbours, and you were, going to speak, you were speaking on race, sensitive issue of race, and the changes to the elected presidency when you took ill. So hence today we're here to discuss those topics. But before that, the question on everyone's mind, how is your health? I'm all right. Uh, doctors went over me very thoroughly the same night and after that, and they went through all possible causes what could have happened. Finally, they concluded that it is what they call vasovagal syncope. Okay. That, for to layman, means you stood up and you fainted. And fortunately, it's nothing worse than that, and no harm came to me, but I had a week's break and I'm back at work. Do you have to take any precautions or changes to your daily routine? Well, they say don't overstrain yourself, and if you think you're going to faint, squat down and don't keel over. Oh dear. <laughs> And when you're travelling, are there new things that you have to do for your routine? Well, I usually have a, a doctor travel with me when I'm going on working trips. I just have to keep a sustainable pace. So let's get back to the rally speech yes. and what you wanted to discuss. Yes. You were talking about race and how it's important to ensure that minorities can become elected yes. president. So you also quoted Mr Lee Kuan Yew from yes. the 1965 separation press conference. Yes. We found the video. Let's take a listen to it. Mm. We are going to have a multiracial nation in Singapore. We will set the example. This is not a Malay nation. This is not a Chinese nation. This is not an Indian nation. Everybody will have his place. Equal. After 51 years, that still has power to resonate. How far do you think we've come in building a place where everyone is equal? I think we have come a long way. It's not a Chinese or a Malay or an Indian nation. Everybody has his place. Everybody is equal. Treated equally, equal standing, equal rights and status. And uh, if you look at the survey which CNA did recently mm -hmm. with IPS, it shows that people believe in this ideal and believe that we have made progress towards this ideal. I mean, they don't think that people should be treated favorably. They don't believe that they are being treated favorably and they believe that anybody who works hard will be able to do well, which is what it should be. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that we have become colorblind because we are different races, different languages, different religions, and those uh, factors are still important to us and will be for a very long time to come. Okay, PM, let's talk about that survey that you mentioned, the CNEIPS yeah. survey again. We also we looked at the numbers and we put up a chart here which shows the preference for Chinese, Malay and Indians for somebody of the same race and of other races marrying into their yeah. family. So this is the chart and it shows that the Chinese, Malay and Indians have a very high, strong preference for people of their own race marrying into their family. Perhaps not surprising, but the picture is a little bit different when we show preference for other races marrying into their families, with the Chinese particularly low. How surprised were you, and do you think this is a cause for concern? I'm not surprised. When it comes to personal decisions, you look for whom to marry, whom to be very good friends with, whom to do business with, mm -hmm. whom to consult if you have a personal problem. Uh, you look for somebody who is like yourself. And so when you are uh, looking for a possible partner or spouse or son-in-law or daughter-in-law, if it's the same race as you, well, that's one hurdle less. If it's not, it's something you'll have to think over. So when it comes to personal choices like this, it's not surprising. A Chinese, accepting a Chinese into the family, well, 98% would have no problem. Likewise, Malays accepting Malays into the family, or Indians accepting Indians into the family. But a Chinese accepting a Malay or accepting an Indian, well, that takes a little bit more effort, and it's not surprising that the acceptance is lower. So it matters when it comes to personal decisions, and actually it matters in politics too, which is why it's an issue with the elected president. Okay, but I was just going to call up the other figure which we have about who the Chinese would prefer to represent, the other races would represent them as president. Yes. So the first figure we have, race preference again for president, very high for your own race, yeah. not surprising as well. For the other races, it's also actually quite high. Yeah. It's all over 50%. Yeah. But you do see that for the Chinese, the Malays prefer to have a Chinese over an Indian, the Indians prefer to have a Chinese over a Malay, which means that in a situation where the Chinese are the majority, it could end up that 
the, the minorities are disadvantaged when it comes well, to uh, elections? It means that race counts in elections. Yes. For most people, if you ask them, they will say, I will choose a candidate, I don't care what race he is. Mm -hmm. he is. But if you ask them the question in a survey and it's anonymous, well, they'll tell you race does make a difference. And a significant number will prefer somebody who's their own race. And what it means in Singapore is that if a minority stands for an election as a president, a Malay or an Indian, uh, he will be at a disadvantage. Not everybody will rule him out, but some will find the hurdle higher, and so he starts off at a disadvantage. And in a close election, that will make a big difference. We looked at another election, the 2008 US presidential yes. elections, part of our research, and found, because in that election, a minority won the election. Yes. So here the figures show that 95% of the blacks voted for Mr. Obama, and he won. Why is it we don't believe that this could happen in Singapore? Then? Well, I think the Americans have a very, they have an ideal, which is a melting pot. Race doesn't matter. Whatever race or background you come from, you go to America, you become American. And all shades mix into the blend. And, but, and yet, if you look at what happens in American elections, for years and years and years, only white men became president. And I mean, it, Obama is after 40 odd presidents before he was elected as a black president, first black president to be elected. And as uh, uh, Michelle Obama said, to go into the White House, a house built by slaves. So race actually made a big difference even on Obama's election. People say a black man is elected, that means we have transcended race. But if you look at who was voting for Obama and break it down, white people, a minority voted for him. You look at this. The whites, only 43% voted for Obama, less than half. The Hispanics, two-thirds voted for Obama. The blacks, overwhelmingly. So what does it show? It shows that a black man can now win, but it shows that race is still a big factor in American elections, which is not so surprising. And in Singapore, can it happen? Well, not as extreme as this, but I think in Singapore, race is also a factor and it puts into perspective our position that it's something which is not quite natural, something which we have to accept and something which we have to take into account and decide what we're going to do about. What can we do about it to make sure our system will work properly? Tim, is the concern also more that if we have a minority candidate of very, very good standing, better perhaps than a Chinese candidate, that the minority candidate could lose the election? That is one concern. Of course, if you ask any particular voter, did you vote for the best candidate, he will say yes. Best according to his standard, mm -hmm. his criterion, his judgment. Mm -hmm. And that means he, man is capable, man is honest, man identifies with him, man speaks his language, mm -hmm. or woman speaks his language, maybe uh, same race with him. So it doesn't mean that People are not looking for a good candidate, but who is a good candidate? That definition differs depending on which voter you ask. And race is one of the factors which goes into that. And that means if a minority is, if we want a minority to be a president from time to time, which I think is very important in Singapore, because the president represents all Singaporeans. He's, he's, the, he's the figure representing not just a state, but the nation, all of us then we must have a minority president from time to time, non-Chinese, a Malay one, an Indian or other minority. And then people see that, yes, this is my country. Someone like me can become the head of state, can represent the country. But you not think that the younger generation and that we have moved after 51 years, that more people are more inclined to be more race blind and to believe so much in meritocracy that they would vote for the best candidate? Well, I think that there is a difference with the younger ones. If you break down the data in the survey, which you showed earlier, amongst the younger ones, the distinction is less. In other words, they are less race conscious. But the distinction is still there. It hasn't disappeared. And I don't think it will disappear for a long time. How concerned are you about finding a good quality minority candidate, even with the changes? Um, do you think we have a large enough pool and would you be satisfied with the quality of the looking at the criteria today? Well, there are a qualified minority candidates. The pool is still 
not as big as it is for the Chinese candidates, obviously. But I think over time it will grow. And you can see as the communities have progressed, the Malays, the Indians, uh, and more and more of them are in the professional ranks and will rise up in the system. In the public sector, there will be. In the private sector too, you see them uh, rising, uh, running companies uh, in the professions. So I think that this will be less of a problem in terms of numbers, but in terms of getting elected, it is something which we have to continue to pay attention to. We'll have to go for a short break right now. How, when we come back, we'll discuss how it will work and what the Constitutional Commission has recommended in terms of guaranteeing minority representation to become the president.